Hello, 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 dear influential leaders, movers and shakers. This is Lenka and I am here in Bali and I have had the most amazing experiences in my life throughout the past months. Now, as my trip is approaching, I decided to interview a couple of people and I had a trip to Spali Silent Retreat and I took many yoga classes all over the place just to make sure that I stay in balance and my body is moving and I was surprised because I never kind of experienced the true real yoga. For those who know me, you know that I have been in a sports and fitness and dance world for pretty much my whole life and nobody has ever explained to me what yoga is truly about. So once you get into this competition world, your ego gets very much on the surface because it's all about winning, right? And it's only our ego that kind of wants to win. So obviously we are human beings. We are this consciousness spirit in a human body. So yes, we do experience egocentric behaviors, which is completely all right once we are aware of that. So when I was doing yoga, I met this amazing very special lady. I'm searching for the right words because there are not really words that can possibly describe this amazing human being. So I've seen this lady and she was walking around and I was very impressed by her pure energy and by her humble behavior. And I am talking about Siu Lei or as I think the name is pronounced in Chinese is Xiao Lei. This is the small lady, very tiny, and I didn't know she is a yoga teacher until one day she appeared in a class. And I was amazed because the words she was speaking out were so spot on during the yoga class. She was the first one who made me really understand what ego is about. She made me understand what yoga is about, how to feel even more my energy. And you know, once you live this life in this human body, it's all about energy. We all know when we are low on energy, we don't perform, we don't have the same amount of experiences and definitely not the same level of experiences as we would desire. So you probably know once you are tired, you do not really create such great things as when you are full of energy and you feel balanced and calm and you have this peace of mind. Often people struggle with meditation and I didn't know that yoga is just a different way of meditating. For me, it was really groundbreaking because I did not know that I can meditate while doing yoga. I thought it's more about the postures, but as Siule explains during this interview, you will understand that yoga is not as much about the postures, it's about many other things. When I asked Siule to be interviewed, she was very surprised that someone is so interested in her life. And Siule, when you listen to this, I want to thank you because you were one of the very few people who had a profound effect and impact on my life throughout this past months. You showed me how to finally live my life in a balanced and harmonized way, how to get out of my ego state and how to contribute even more to this world. So thank you for this. And guys, keep your ears wide open and attentive because this interview has so many hidden secrets. You will find lots of truth once you open up and listen carefully. So here we go. See you later. See you later. Welcome to the Influential Executive Podcast. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. We met in Bali where I attended some of your amazing yoga classes. But I know you are from California. So mm -hmm. what brought you to Bali? What brought me to Bali? I think I was ready for some kind of change after having the same career for a number of years, like 22 years. And instead of looking for another career, I just was open to opportunities. And there was an opportunity to come to a retreat that a girl was doing to be the yoga teacher. So I came here to for a month to help her with her retreat, which was only a week or two, and uh, kept coming back. <laughs> and have you always lived in the United States? I did. I lived in California, in Santa Cruz, most of my life. But 
you are not originally, or your origins are back to China, right? Yes, my parents met in California, but they're of Chinese descent. Mm. And uh, so I was born in San Francisco and lived in America for the first 49 years of my life. Then the first trip I came to, to Bali mm -hmm. for that retreat, I met a man and we had a great communication. And even though we met each other for only three days, he said, oh, come move to Australia with me. <laughs> and I thought, why not? <laughs> and that was the beginning of me coming to Bali a lot because uh, in Australia, I moved, I cleared out my house. I sold everything and closed down my business and um, went to Australia where I lived with this man for about a year. And then he broke up with me, which was the best thing that could have happened because it set me on my journey. Mm -hmm. And from there, I went to Bali for a, a couple of months thinking I'll return to Australia. I began to really love Australia and thought, well, I'll go back. I'll, I have to leave because of my visa. But once my visa is renewed, I'll go back to Australia. But once I moved to Bali for a couple of months, I actually got quite depressed. And then all of a sudden things started to come my way and I started to make some money and have a circle of people that I could feel like I was in community with and, per and uh, participated yeah. in the community as a volunteer for children and such. So I thought I'm going to stay in Bali. <laughs> and, but then I got a, I looked up an ad in the newspaper and it said, oh, we need a yoga teacher in Malaysia for one month at this beautiful five-star resort where you get to stay as a guest. We just want you to teach yoga once a day. And I said, well, I'm going to apply for that. So then I went, okay, I'll leave my things in Bali, go to Malaysia for a month and I'll come back. Well, I went to Malaysia and I stayed there. I didn't come back to Bali. <laughs> And from there, just opportunities come your way. You just have, or for me, I just needed to ha have space for them to be, uh, to notice the signs, the omens that I'm empty enough to hear uh, and not try to push a direction. Mm -hmm. And I've been traveling like that, going from retreat center to resort for the last five years. Wow. So you have no really like residence place where you where you stay. You you travel every single month. I am living here right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For another two weeks. <laughs> and then? Uh, then I go to Malaysia. Wow. So you really travel and surrender, and opportunities come, and you feel, and then you just go. Yes. Over the last five years, I've only had to pay for a hotel. <laughs> maybe once or twice. <laughs> it's like ideal life for most people. Isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's truly a blessed life. I feel very aligned. I, this is the path I'm supposed to be on. I'm very fulfilled. And um, yeah, it's quite the, a blessed life. And you said, or you told us a story during one of the classes about you not being so happy that you were Chinese when you were younger. Mm -hmm. And then around your 30, I think, or mid 30, you made a switch and you really embraced the culture and now you're very happy you're a Chinese. I do think that it, it is kind of very familiar to lots of people, maybe not related to their background, but many people struggle with loving themselves for mm -hmm. who they are, the bodies they've been given, the eyes they've been given and all sorts of things. So what helped you to, to make the switch and start to love yourself? Mm -hmm. It wasn't a conscious choice. It just happened to, for me rather than me forcing anything. When I was in my mid-30s, I started taking uh, martial arts, Kung Fu, which is a Chinese uh, martial art. And the Sifu, the teacher, was uh, very... He just gave the Chinese culture such dignity and he was so proud of... Not proud, how can I say it? Appreciative, maybe? Um, he just respected so much the culture and he shared the reasons why he respected it and he was able to 
share that with the, his students in a way that he wasn't forcing anything. He was just teaching Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. But you always get the sidelines of, you know, you get the, de the subtle details of, of things. For example, I wanted to learn Kung Fu because I thought, wow, the great to know it. It's so beautiful. And it'd be great to be able to fight. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but actually what happens is you learn the subtleties of it and you understand, oh, you learn how to fight, but now you don't need to fight. So the beauty of the, the form, how to move the body, understanding the mechanics and how, how, um, how to make shapes that are all, it's so beautiful. And you go, why is that beautiful? And somehow it's a deeper meaning, the subtleties of it. Like it, it's the strength of the form. You, you, you see it. You, you may not. It's kind of like when you listen to a, a, um, a beautiful song mm -hmm. and you're not quite sure what elements, why it's making it so beautiful. Put together, though, you're like, oh, you just oh, know yeah. it's, 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 yes. it's art. Yes. It was the same thing when you see a painting and it's just spot on. You would never know all the details of how to put it together, but once you see the picture in the whole, um, you feel it. Yes. And so I began to feel that the culture was uh, quite deep. In fact, my, my family, they, they're Chinese too, right? <laughs> but they, they grew up being Chinese, and it wasn't anything special to know these characters in mm. Chinese and how it got put together and, and all those things that just... Uh, are always there for them. They didn't appreciate it, but for me, it was like something new. Yeah. Kind of like uh, you don't appreciate electricity because we always have electricity, yes. but for somebody that's never had it, it's like, wow, this is fantastic. <laughs> and what do you appreciate? Or what is the most fascinating on Chinese culture in your eyes? Oh, there's so much. Two things, two okay. things. Um, the Chinese medicine mm -hmm. and... Yeah, I would say probably the most intriguing thing to me is about like the five elements, Taoism, Chinese medicine. And what, what is it that you like on Chinese medicine? Well, as a book, there's a book that's called The Web Without the Weaver. Mm -hmm. A Web Without a Weaver. That describes it so well. It's like how everything is, everything is connected, everything supports it, each other. And it's kind of like a puzzle. It's kind of like... The plants want to talk to you, but they've got this secret language, and it's whether or not you're willing to look at it and see if you can figure out the riddle that's fascinating. Ah. Like everything is a little clue. Everything is an omen. Everything is an insight. But if you're not looking for it, it's not there. You're, you're, you'll walk right by it. That's why you need to be empty. You said it a couple, a couple of sentences before that. In order to see the opportunities, you needed to be empty enough to be able to welcome them in your life. Yes. But what does that mean to be empty enough to be able to welcome other things? Mm. Well, I see a lot of Westerners are very full. Their life is very full. I try to make a, uh, when I'm in California, I'm like, hey, let's have lunch. And my girlfriend will say, on two weeks on a Wednesday at 3 p.m. she has time. You know, that means the rest of her time is very full. There's no space. Mm -hmm. The cup is full. Yeah. So as a traveler, here's an interesting thing. I find that almost all travelers, I think every traveler that I've met that lives a nomadic life like I do, they're happy. They have how many things? Probably one suitcase. Yeah. Life is very simple. And does that mean also... Because that's the material part of your life, and then you have the immaterial part of your life. So the beliefs, the thoughts that you have. Did you also have to empty that part of your life in order to be able to embrace new opportunities, or was it mostly related to the material life? Everything's interconnected. If you have a lot of things in your house, you probably have a lot of things in your head. If you don't have much, you, you, everything in the mind also will quiet down. There's not as much that... Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of like somebody that um, uh, wants to meditate, but they can't sit still. If you can't even sit, keep your body still, then how the, can the mind be still too? It's all interconnected. And related to this, 
we also give classes on Qigong. And that's a lot about moving your energy and really feeling your body. Did you start with Qigong um, after Kung Fu or before Kung Fu? When, why did you start with Qigong? Like Qigong is part of Kung Fu. In fact, they say that Kung Fu is not a complete art without Qigong. To give it like um, power, the power behind it. Can you explain to people who have no experience with Qigong, what, what is Qigong about? Mm. Qi means energy. In the yoga world, you could call it prana. It could be called power or movement. And um, gong means the practice of. So it's the practice of qi, how to move qi, how to cultivate qi, to understand qi. And everyone can feel qi? I would say everyone naturally feels it. Maybe perhaps they're not aware of it. For example, if you're in a small room and there's a lot of stuff in the room, a lot of uh, books and newspapers and dishes and stuff in a small room, and with, there's a chair in there and you can sit in it, you, yeah, you can be comfortable in that chair, but you don't feel comfortable uh, exactly. You're, it might be nice to be sitting, but you get a little claustrophobic, like everything's coming in on you. Mm -hmm. It's because you're aware of the chi in that space is very tight, is very small. Yes. Whereas if you're sitting uh, like here and we see the rice fields and we feel the wind and the room is airy, oh, we feel more comfortable. I don't need to be in a cushy chair to be more comfortable mm -hmm. here because of the chi. It's like feng shui. A lot of people are familiar with feng shui, the placement of furniture, the placement of your house, uh, so that uh, the energy flows freely. So that people can then people can feel it once they create the space and put their awareness. Everybody feels it all the time. For example, some people, as you're walking down the street, you want you can make a shortcut, but then you'd have to go in between two cars that are really close together. And you can fit through there, but we don't want to be in between two cars. It feels uncomfortable. The chi is tight. we rather take the long way around so we can feel uh, the energy is more airy and free. Indeed, it makes you naturally feel good. And what I really liked, and that's related back to your Chinese uh, background, is that you explain the sign of, uh, of qi in Chinese. Mm. Can you explain it to, to our listeners, how the sign of, of qi, what, what is the symbolic of it? Yes, so it's called a Chinese character, how they write, and the Chinese language is written with pictures rather than with an alphabet. So what pictures would you use to make the word qi? Mm -hmm. Yes, very challenging for us to even consider it. Yes. <laughs> and how they do it is they, um, they draw a grain of rice, uncooked rice, mm -hmm. and then there's steam coming up off of it to show uh, the word qi, and how does that work? Well, it means that qi means, we talked about energy and movement and power. Well, it can also mean breath, like you're breathing. Yes, that makes sense, qi, breathing, mm -hmm. but it can also mean steam, like rice cooking. And how does that work? <laughs> so, um, it has to do with uh, the elimination organs in your body. This is my guess. It makes sense to me, uh, but I just, yes. this is my guess, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. In your lower abdomen is your elimination organs, mm -hmm. like your bladder and such, and water is very yin, and water goes down. Yes. Yin, so we need to explain yin, yin. and yang, okay. <laughs> yin and yang, the symbol, of black and white symbol, uh, that has kind of like a little white inside mm -hmm. the black and the little black inside the white in a circle circle symbol. That's yin and yang, meaning that there's a little bit of yin in the yang and a little bit of yang in the yin. But primarily yang is um, masculine. Mm -hmm. It's the sun, it's summer, it's energy rising, it's 
the heat of the day, it's fire, mm -hmm. it's energy moving. And then you have yin, which is the opposite, it's the feminine, it's the cool, the cold, the internal stuff, the nighttime, the winter, the coming in together in a more internal way. And so back to the elimination organs, that's water. Water is yin, where fire is yang. So the elimination organs uh, has water and we, we, when water comes out, goes down into the ground, downward. And as Westerners, um, we think a lot and that is uh, energy that's yang, heat thinking, power, movement. So our brain um, <laughs> sends all this energy of uh, thinking, so it brings the energy up from the, t from the brain towards the sky. So it leaves the middle of the body empty. Now if you had a fire in your dantian, that's below the belly button, and that is a practice. You can, that's a practice that a lot of monks do is they build the fire in their dantian below the belly button. They just use their imagination and then their focus and awareness to build a fire there in the lower belly. And when you do that, or even have, when you have a meditation, it will allow for your mind to become very quiet. The mind's not thinking anymore, it's building a fire in the Dantian, or it's just quiet. So the quiet energy of your brain now, it's not yang anymore, it's yin. So like water, the yin energy goes down. Whereas you're, if you're building a fire in the Dantian, that fire energy rises, creating steam, which ends up being internal circulation. Mm. Wow. Kind of wordy. No, it's it's beautiful. I mean, it's it's difficult to explain it uh, in words, and I think it's it was more than uh, more than clear. So you mm -hmm. calm your mind, if I understand correctly, you calm your mind, which means the yin energy, the cool cooler energy, and the dantian is the yang, and that's the warmer energy. And it's like you explain it. It's like raining, right? Raining on something nice. warm, and that's what creates the steam. Yes, and that's what's then the symbolic of qin. Of chi, of chi. That is my interpretation yes. of the symbol, steam. Mm. Interesting. And then related to yoga, because you mentioned yoga as well, and that's how we met. When did you start with yoga? And why did you say I start with yoga? Because you had the Kung Fu and Qigong practice. Was it before or after that you started with yoga? When I was doing Kung Fu in my mid-30s, uh, it was not so good for my low back and I couldn't do the Kung Fu anymore. So I decided to do yoga, and then I haven't done Kung, Kung Fu since then. And I've been doing yoga now for about 10 years. So yoga is actually good for your lower back. Yes. <laughs> because I was always being told, yeah, when you have like, I am hypermobile, that was the first thing that I actually asked you. Uh, I said, uh, Sule, I'm hypermobile, can I do yoga? Because I heard that it's really not good for, uh, for hypermobile people. So you, it's no problem. Uh, my belief is yoga is good for most everybody. If you're hypermobile, then you have to do yoga a little more carefully. Mm -hmm. But yes, because it's going to build, you, build the strength. Right. I was like very happy with your classes for many reasons and mainly because I finally understood what yoga is about. I was coming, I came a few times to a yoga class and it was more about this posture and put like there and hand there and, and it was a lot of struggle. Even though I'm, I'm flexible very much, keeping those postures was, was really hard for me. And then here you came and I was rather skeptical when I came to the yoga classes of everyone, not just yours, but everyone. I was like, okay, this is going to be probably struggle for one and a half hour where I'm not going to be able to really hold up to this. And then you came and you were the first person who really explained me what yoga is about, that it has very little to do with the postures when you look at the global picture and a lot to do with your mind and with your breathing. Can you explain us what is actually yoga about or what's the history of yoga? Mm -hmm. The yoga postures 
Now, other people can explain their way better than I can, but I'm going to give you a simplistic, under, my understanding right. is the, the postures were actually to uh, warm your body up and support a meditation. When you first wake up and you sit, it's not so easy for your body. But if you warm the body up, I think of it like a, a dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have a, a, a young dog and it's in the house all day long and then you come home and it's so happy to see you and it's jumping and you're like, I want you to sit and stay and the dog can't contain himself. He's like, I'm so happy to see you <laughs> in the house all day and he's jumping no matter how much you want him to sit and stay, he can't contain himself. And that's like the mind. Oh, I just need to do, I need to think, I need to do stuff. But if you exercise the dog and let him run a lot, just up and down the beach or something, and then he's pretty tired, he's had his, his energy has been released. All right, now you can tell that dog, sit and stay. And the dog will go, well, okay. <laughs> yes, I can sit, I can stay right now, I can do this. It's the same thing with the mind. So the yoga practice is helping to open up the body so you're comfortable to sit on the ground, maybe in a cross-legged Padmasana style. Mm -hmm. And your mind can say, okay, I've, I've had some exercise with the postures and now I can still my mind. So yoga is here to support my meditation and that's something I didn't know. Yoga, <laughs> uh, I, I, that was the original form was that from what I understand is that the yoga, yes, supports your meditation. Now, as uh, householders, they call it, we don't have eight hours to, to do our, our meditation. So what we do is we cut it all up into maybe one hour, maybe one and a half hours. Our meditation and the yoga are now intertwined. Mm -hmm. So while I'm there struggling with the postures, I should meditate. How is, how is that all possible? One, there shouldn't be any struggle. <laughs> <laughs> all the postures should have a way that you can be in it and feel like you're steady. Mm -hmm. And there's somehow an easiness, and that's with the breathing. If you can breathe easily in this posture, then you're probably doing it right. Yep. But if you're struggling with your breath, then you're maybe going into the posture too deeply, or your body's not, a, your body's saying, ah, I'm, I, I'm not good with this right now. So you need to back off a little bit until the breath does become steady. And then it can be a meditation. I find that if I follow my breathing during a yoga practice, and I don't always do it, I forget too, even mm -hmm. after 10 years. But if I follow my breathing, my practice feels so satisfying. Whereas if I don't, then uh, sometimes the ego comes in and says, oh yeah, you can do it, you can get those toes, do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly my point. That's yes. I, you kept repeating it every single class and I found it very important, that reminder, to let, let, let go of the ego. Just follow your breath and your body will tell you what's the right posture, what's the right speed, what's the right everything. And it, the ego sneaks in very easily. So it was really nice that you kept reminding people about that. So what, what would be the common signs of ego being the motivator or the, um, the power behind or the force mm -hmm, more behind? Mm -hmm during yoga how can people recognize okay now i am i am more in the in the ego state than in my surrender and meditation state okay i want to go back a little bit though mm -hmm. please uh, about the yin yang and oh, yeah. uh, it, how it it, it uh, is entwined with the yoga because when you're doing the postures your body heats up mm -hmm. and there's a lot of uh, even when you're just doing standing a posture like uh, warrior one pose, a very common posture. Your legs are apart and your arms are up to the sky. Well, you, there's all these little, uh, you have to be aware of your entire body. And it's not so easy to hold the posture. Your mu leg muscles are working, your stomach muscles are working. So it heats you up from the inside out. Your core gets hot. The, the abdomen, the dantian gets hot. Meanwhile, in the posture, there, everything is engaged in doing the movement that the mind becomes quiet. Like yin, meeting yang, the fire, creating steam inside the body. 
So it's also it's all like a roadmap that is intertwined. Now, when the ego comes in, is when you stop following your breathing. In fact, I see people just either don't breathe, <laughs> or they breathe very shallow mm -hmm. because they're like, all I want is to get my toes. Yeah. And then their body becomes uh, in a shape that's not in good alignment. Your back is not straight anymore. Your breathing is tight. All of those things is your mind working now. You've come out of your meditation and your mind is doing a stretch. You're not doing yoga anymore. Your mind is saying, I'm going to do aerobics and I'm going to get my toes. Ah. And you can see it uh, in, in yourself just by lis listening to your breath, feeling your breath, feeling your breath so you're connected to your body. And when you do that, you're like, I, my body knows. My body has... Uh, an intelligence that my mind doesn't, which is how to be good to myself. How can I do this so it's in a way that's nurturing and uh, healing for myself, where I don't have to prove anything. I'm being authentic. I'm here in this pose in a spot that feels just perfect. It's sweet. It's the sweet spot. I'm not being lazy, but I'm not letting the ego take me somewhere that my body doesn't want to go. Wow. That's, it's, I think it's the Tao, right, in, uh, in Chinese as well. It's the way, the, the middle, the balance, the harmony. It's not going on the edges and trying to push too yes. much into the extreme and staying in the sweet spot. Yes. And I believe that lots of people feel stressed because they are out of Tao, they are out of their way. But what is, according to you, the reason that so many people in the world are currently experiencing stress? Well, there's probably so many factors, but from, from my point of view, seeing my Western friends, is their life is so full. Mm -hmm. The less you have, the more simple it life is. And simplicity really helps um, you to remember who you are having a balance of a meditation or yoga. It may balance having so much stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> material stuff, um, just distraction. There's noise everywhere, whether it's from the media or your family needs you to do this and your work needs you to do that. There's a lot of input. So having less input and having alone time allows me to remember who I really am. I can come back to my authentic self. Do you have any tips for people to start applying, let's say today, to start living more mindful life? Yeah, just breathe. And Eckhart Tolle uh, was sharing in one of his books about, uh, he wrote The Power of Now and a new earth and in one of those books i think it says something like uh, a student came up to him and he said i can take any of these courses uh, there were like a hundred courses he could take some of them were about qigong or yoga or meditation or um reiki or chakras or mm -hmm. all kinds of new age things for healing and health and eckhart tolle said to him if you just follow your breath for one year Pay attention to your breathing for one year. You'll learn more than in all of these courses combined. It's kind of like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. I don't know if you remember that movie. Oh. <laughs> uh, we're off to see the wizard. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's a classic old movie. Mm -hmm. And people my age <laughs> <laughs> will totally remember it. She had these ruby slippers on her feet. Mm -hmm. All through the movie, she just wants to go home. She's going down this road to find her way home. She's going through this trial so that she can find her way home. And she didn't realize she kept looking outside. Maybe he can help me. Maybe this can help me. But she always had it inside of her. She had ruby slippers. She just had to click her slippers and she would go home. It's the same thing with the breathing. You always have home with you. It's, we go out searching for it. But you're, it's always there. All you have to do is breathe. And you bring all your attention to just that one breath that you're breathing right now. 
And it's also true that we always say we can't really go without water or without food. But when you really think deeper, we can sustain a life longer without food and without water, not without breath. Yes, and we don't even think about our breath. It's kind of like electricity. <laughs> <laughs> we don't see it, so we don't believe kind of that, that it's... We don't really believe in many things that we can't see. And we take them for granted without really understanding their if, purpose. If you just simplify, it gets very easy. The more complex your life is, the, the, I, I, from my experience with my friends, the more complicated their life is, the more unhappy they are. So how can you simplify? It could be something as easy as, oh, I won't be on the internet as much. Or, oh, maybe I'll spend some alone time this weekend with myself. Mm -hmm. However, it, whatever you need to do to simplify, um, breathe. Yeah, makes sense. And you teach yoga for children sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. How do you explain this to children? Because I believe that when children get this m meaning or at least a sense of living their life in a relaxed way, being here now present. And children rather get it more than we adults, I would say. <laughs> How do you explain it to them? Because I really like, I sometimes have the feeling that your yoga classes are like for children. You have a nice explanation. You don't use those difficult names that I haven't, like, I don't understand them. Like, if you tell me these this strange words, I don't know what should I do. But you always find a nice way of how to explain them so that I know how to do them. So, how do you explain mindfulness to children? Um, actually, for adults too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Really, sometimes I talk too much because you just showed the, you just do the yoga, you just teach a yoga class without having to put philosophy behind it. The yoga does everything. I don't need to talk. Mm. The yoga poses, once you do them, after coming onto your mat all the time, you just come out, you just come show up on yeah. your yoga mat. That your own breathing, your own yoga practice, your own struggling with being hypermobile, mm -hmm. your own uh, how do you come into this pose is going to teach you a lot more than I could ever teach you. So it's the same with the yoga for children. I don't need to tell them anything like, okay, you're going to need to be mindful in this pose. They, you, they just, you just give them the pose and let them play with it. Now what they're going to do is they're going to experiment with this pose and they might get very creative in it. Oh, look what I can do. Look at this. Look at that. Mm -hmm. And then they have, um, they play with that creativity, which helps them to come outside of, they're not in the regular box of, of learning. Creativity helps you to go um, beyond the box. You have an uh, innate intelligence that's beyond uh, what you can learn in school. And if you teach the yoga to children, they'll start to incorporate the breathing eventually. They'll start to incorporate uh, strength in their body. And those things teach you a lot more than I can teach you. You just do teach them the yoga. Of course, you have to make it interesting. Yeah. So we, we just play and say, oh, what does a pirate look like? Well, they stand on one leg. Mm. And they have one eye, so we put one eye, one hand over our eye like it's a, a, an eye patch. And they have a hook, so then our other hand is a hook. And so these playful ways keep them interested. Mm. I think it really builds like self-confidence because you end up doing things like headstand. It's so empowering to do headstand. I've never done a headstand in a yoga class. I still do not really know how to do it. <laughs> You already have the strength to do it. Uh, here we don't offer it because yeah. we want the yoga to be gentle. But I'm happy to offer how to do yoga. <laughs> Headstand right here when you're ready. <laughs> because you already have everything you need to do it. We just, yeah. have, we just haven't tried it yet. Uh, absolutely. I, I, I really enjoyed the... Not only the, the small stories that you said. Well, the, the stories helped tremendously at the end. Because I had a visual meaning for what I'm doing and I really understood why I'm doing this pose rather than just doing the pose and hoping that I feel it in the right spot and you also were reading quotes throughout the class well especially when we had a bit more of restorative way we were longer 
several minutes in a pose and just breathe in. And while your head is obviously spinning and going 200 miles an hour, you brought me back into, okay, mindful living and being and meditating with having an idea and um, an inspiration, let's say, being medit or meditate on a certain topic. So what is the name of the person that you were reading the quotes from? Well, there were many, mm -hmm. um, but one that I really like, and I'm not even sure if I'll say his name right, is Tech Nhat Hanh. Yes, that one I mean. Yes. That one I mean. And he speaks a lot about silence. Yes. And um, about, um, I don't know, there were many more topics about gratitude or something as well. I he's very, he's very, he's so beautiful about mindfulness. So that's another way that uh, everyone in their daily life can experience meditation. You don't have to sit for an hour. Whatever you are doing, you do it with mindfulness. And he shares a beautiful thing, I'm paraphrasing, but he says when he washes a teapot, it's not to get it done. Okay, we've got to get this clean. No, it's about washing the teapot, not about having to get it clean. This is, this is your... Um, your baby, I don't think it was. Yeah, this is what's been given you in your life right now. Be present with this moment. It's to, it's with the, to be with this teapot. And he shares it like it's the baby Jesus that he's giving a bath to mm. or the baby Buddha. So then you, how do you wash a teapot then? <laughs> it's not about getting it clean and on the shelf. It's about how you're, you're engaging with this teapot or even walking. Are you sure? Can you take a couple of steps with mindfulness? I'm t putting my foot onto the earth. I am kissing the earth with my feet. Even a few steps as you're walking to your office or something can give you the sense of peacefulness. And you're kissing the earth. You're giving the earth some love. And you know, describes uh, in a similar way the way how you think that monks are eating. The, the, the way that they... You, you, can you describe it? How do you understand that monks are eating? How mindfully they are eating? Well, I'm only guessing. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really found it interesting because I started to do it and my experience was different. With ah, you. isn't it beautiful? Um, even walking here, we have wood floors. It's on the second level mm -hmm. or third level, our floor where we eat and people walk. Bonk, 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 bonk. And the vibration you, as you're sitting there, you feel the people walking. Bonk, bonk, mm -hmm. bonk, bonk. But you could walk mindfully, softly and then it's more peaceful in the room. And you, not only does everybody else get to benefit from it, you get the benefit of, I am walking lightly on the earth. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way when you're eating, to quiet your mind down, just eat. Don't watch the television. Don't be driving. Don't be talking to your, to your friend. Eat by yourself and appreciate the food. I put qigong into my food. So I hover my hand over the food and I send it energy. It's almost like warming up the food. And the respect for the food is like, uh, please receive me as I receive you. Please nourish me. Please be a part of me. And then you take your spoon and you put it in your bowl and you say, in your heart, you say, I am taking a spoonful of food. I am taking a spoonful of this dragon fruit. I'm bringing the dragon fruit to my mouth. I am bringing the dragon fruit to my mouth. I am eating the dragon fruit. I am enjoying the dragon fruit. I am appreciating the dragon fruit. I am swallowing. I am swallowing. <laughs> Many people have no patience for it. Like, yeah. Dragon fruit. <laughs> and what's next? And you said, yeah, they are not looking at uh, what's the plan about. And they are really focused on, on the food, on that particular bite, not on the whole bowl, on that one bite. And that was really funny. I then grabbed the bowl the same day and sitting about, okay, I'm going to do it. See you later. Anyway. <laughs> and it was challenging. I might say. <laughs> it was like, okay, so I am here eating the carrot. And as I was chewing the carrot, I was like, okay. And then you're already collecting the second fork, right? And the third, I was like, no, 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 no. 
And then I looked on the right and there was this girl. And I observe people a lot because I, I just love to analyze and see and, and understand. And she had a really nice habit of taking a bite, leaving the fork where it is and putting her hands down. Wow. And then chewing, chewing, chewing. I was like, that is actually a very nice habit. Let me try it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, very challenging. And it, it is possible. I really took my time. First of all, I was full way faster from a little portion. And I really tasted what I'm eating. Oh, that's beautiful. So it, it was, and I love food. So it was, <laughs> it was a great experience. Siule, um, how does your normal month look like? Looking at the fact that you surrender and travel. Yes. Um, I've been very blessed that the universe just provides me with places. And I'm usually at a resort or a retreat center for one or two months a year uh, at a time. And then I move to the next place. And I go to California to my family to visit my mom and my family once a year for one or two months. Mm -hmm. So most of my time is either in Bali or Thailand or Malaysia or France. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, sometimes a little bit in, in Amsterdam. Really? Do you have any, uh, any trip planned to Amsterdam so that we can uh, get a coffee in Amsterdam? <laughs> Are you from uh, Amsterdam? Yes, yeah, we live <laughs> close by Amsterdam. Uh, usually if I'm in Amsterdam, it's in September, beginning of September with uh, uh, Nanette that does um, uh, Pilates uh, retreats. Mm -hmm. And I will get you the name of her uh, retreat after I forget yes. the name of it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So in the end, where can people find you? Do you have any videos or can people find a website somewhere or something where they can get inspired? Because you're artist as well, you do so many things. Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> so people just will run into you hopefully in one of the retreats or uh, in Amsterdam. <laughs> How to get a hold of me? Um, I have some artwork on Instagram. <laughs> that would be nice. I, get, I don't really promote myself. <laughs> <laughs> I want to promote you <laughs> because your work is beautiful. Like you open my eyes. I've told, I already said it to you. You open my eyes, and especially the ego thing. Even though we are aware of this. It has so many different faces and so many masks and so many different clothes and variations mm. and it sneaks in very easily and you really made me see many of those. So I, I just think it's so beautiful that many more people will, will like to experience it. Yes, well, I think you gave it to yourself <laughs> <laughs> and I just was one of the qualities of many different qualities that came into your life and you were open. So I thank you so much for receiving me like like you have and um doing what i do is is so fulfilling because of things like what you just said that you feel like you've um got something yeah absolutely thank you so much you late for your time for sama your sama work. which means <laughs> yeah it means you're welcome much of the same thank you thank you beautiful <laughs> Brilliant, thank you so much. Sama sama. Wow, that was a different experience. Am I right? Siule is such a humble human being. She is such a, also an amazing spirit and I had the amazing opportunity to spend lots of time with her. And yes, even though it was a silence a lot for me, I still allowed myself to ask questions because I recognized that there is so much experience and wisdom in CULA that I just came approach her and ask questions. And I can tell you because I surrendered, I wasn't hard on myself. I got all of all my principles and rules of no, you are here just to be silent. So once I got out of this um, principle ruled mind, 
then I experienced beautiful things. And Siule, as I said at the beginning, was a big part of my experience. She was my guide and I read many books throughout my stay. And it was as if she is reading exactly the same books because she was really speaking out the same words and similar phrases and similar thoughts. So even though my thoughts somewhere or I drifted out and I had thoughts in my head, she always managed to bring me back into uh, being mindful and conscious and into my meditation state. So I would highly encourage you guys to find such a spiritual teacher, great Qigong, Kung Fu or meditation or yoga class where the person guides you through by giving you a nice quotes and prompts that actually bring you into why you were here, why you want to meditate, why you want to be mindful, why you want to have a peace of mind. Because we do not have to be stressed and work hard. We do not have to use force. We can use the power within and there is no one else who will do it on our behalf. That's only us, that's only our decision to want to live a stress-free life. And once you live stress-free life, your experiences are amazing. You experience completely different things. You are here, you are present in here and now and you are able to observe. You suddenly see things you didn't even know here exist around you just because you were so busy. Once we are busy, we are not in here and now and we can't experience. And for that particular reason, you know that me and Alexander, we started our amazing Earn More Work Less company. We started to help you to live the lifestyle that you desire. To be able to have the lifestyle that you want, to have the work that you want. You don't have to work hard. Once you start living from your heart, from your intuition, all kinds of things start to evolve and present to yourself. And yes, I know now you have a work and you say, I don't have time and there are many things I want to do, but somehow I struggle to get the time. Well, that's exactly the reason why we organize right now our earn more work less stress-free masterclass. So go on earnmoreworkless.com slash stress-free masterclass and register. We have still seats available for free. It is a three part masterclass where we are going to um, teach you exactly the same thing as we show to our clients, the system that helps them to have way much more free time and to finally spend time with their families, to finally go to this yoga class that I've never attended because I thought I have no time, to finally come to your work and not be stressed out because there is so much work and you have no idea what is on your plan, to finally find the nice relationships within your workflow, just because you all guys work with similar system and you all know what are you up to and you have the time to make interactions that are worth it. So guys, go to earnmoreworkless.com slash stress-free masterclass and register right now. And then life becomes way cooler because you have time to finally do whatever it is that you want and you can live your life on purpose because we are going to show you how to do this. So guys, thank you so much for listening. And very soon we are going to be again on air with an amazing guest. Have a blessed day and stay creative and stay stress-free. <laughs>